Welcome to Christmas Eve service of Vineyard Church, Albuquerque. I'm Perry Floyd. This is my wife, Casey. We're the pastors of this church, and we're gathering online to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And so we're glad you're here, and we're just going to have a wonderful time together. This evening, as we celebrate our Christmas Eve service, we will have worship, Christmas songs led by Aaron, Diana, and Billy. And then we will also have the communion, lighting of the Advent candles. And then we'll turn it back over to Perry for a short Christmas message. And then we've saved the best for last. So you want to hang in there and watch all the way through. We have a, a special little thing at the very end. So let's worship together. I hope you're ready to celebrate the incarnation. So Billy and Diana and Aaron, take it away.
And now we begin our celebration of the Advent candles. Before us, we have the candle of hope. 
the candle of love, the candle of joy, and then the final one before the Christ candle is the candle of peace. And the Christ candle celebrates the light that has come into the world. In John 1, 4 and 5, say, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And I just have a word for those of us that are looking to 2021. Jesus is the light. We have come through 2020, a dark time, but we're about to come into the light of his grace and the promises fulfilled, we will see. So right now, as we partake in this Advent time, we're also going to do communion. So if you begin getting your communion elements together, I'm going to put the mic down so I can open this little package. So Jesus also called himself the bread of life. And so right now, his broken body will give us all that we need in him through our knowledge of him. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So right now, take uh, the bread representing Jesus' body. And the juice representing his blood that was poured out for us. So right now, take the juice representing his blood covering us and covering this next year for us. Twenty twenty one is going to be a year of promises fulfilled. And like I said before, Those of you that have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand will receive much of what you've been contending for, if not all. So be prepared for 2021 and this coming new year is going to be a January of justice, a March of celebration, so we can partake of him and this coming new year and all he has for us. Now, it's Perry. Well, it's Christmas Eve. Some of us will open gifts tonight. Some of us will wait till tomorrow. There's a big feast for many of us tomorrow, and we're gathering or not gathering, depending. And so I just want to share something very brief from the scriptures that really grabbed me as I thought about Christmas. You know, a lot of the songs refer to Bethlehem. Uh, Oh, come, let us go to Bethlehem. I love the one that says... uh, Children, where shall I send thee? How shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee one by one. One for the little bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. And we all know that. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Why Bethlehem? What's the deal with Bethlehem? Well, you know the story in Luke chapter 2. Joseph and Mary had to travel to Bethlehem because Joseph was of the line of David. And Bethlehem was David's heritage, his home. That was why they went there. Otherwise, we'd be singing, O little town of Nazareth. Or, or, O come all you faithful, let's go to Nazareth. But they were in Bethlehem for the census. And so God arranged for them to be present at the family home at the city of David, Bethlehem. In Hebrew, Bethlehem means house of bread. And there's a story in 2 Samuel 23 about David and Bethlehem. Let me read that. It was about his three mighty men. In his army, he had these three awesome warriors. One of them's name was Joshua Hasabetheth. 
One of them was Eliezer, and then one of them was Shammah. And it says this, Three of the thirty chief men went down and came about harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam when a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephraim. David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And so the Philistines at this point in history had taken over the city of David, Bethlehem, where Jesse and his family and where David grew up. And David was outside the city, and the Philistines, his enemy, were inside the city. And it says, David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Now, it wasn't a command. It was simply a wish. He was like, oh, that, I remember the taste of that water, that well right there inside the gate of Bethlehem. It would be sure nice if somebody would bring me water from that well. Well, it says, three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. You talk about an adventure, about a, a group of seals or rangers or, you know, the guys breaking through the line just to go to the well, get some water, bring it back and say, here, David, you, your wish is our command. And so that happened. And then notice David's response. David says, he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord and said, Far be it from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. And so, I don't know if you can picture that. Three guys come sweaty, breathing hard, and they've got a container and they say, Here, David, you wished it, we did it, here's that water. And David was overcome with how much they loved him and what risk they were willing to take to bring him just something he mentioned longingly. And so he took that water, the water that they went to get, and he poured it out to the Lord. He said, I can't drink this water. This water represents the lives of those three men. They could have died bringing me this. And so for me to drink this would be to say this water is more valuable than the lives of my three close friends and workers and warriors. And so I'm just going to pour it out to the Lord. I'm going to give it as an offering to him. And he refused to drink it. Now, I know some of us are going, wait a minute. They, they went to all that trouble. Why don't you drink the water? It's an issue of value. David was saying those lives are more valuable than that water. And so I will not take of the water because of the value of the men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So Bethlehem is about value. What happened on Christmas is that God looked at people and said, you are valuable to me. You are worth the sacrifice of that which is the most valuable to me, the life of my son. And so Christmas really means to all of us, it doesn't mean presents or trees or meals. It means incarnation. It means God said, you are valuable. And because you're valuable, I will give to you the most valuable thing in the universe, the life, the blood, the sacrifice of my only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's what we celebrate. And so let me remind you that your life is valuable, that your friends, your family, those you go to school with, those you work with, their lives are valuable. And because they have value, God gave the greatest gift that could ever be. And his son willingly went to the world, became the light of the world, lived without sin, and then laid his life down on the cross to pay for your sin and my sin. This is one of the two greatest days of the year for those of us who follow Jesus. Resurrection Day is the other one, but we're in the midst of the Christmas season, and I just want to celebrate with you that God's gift showed me how valuable I am. Even in my sin, even in my rebellion, God chose to love me and give himself for me. That's worth celebrating. And so I just want to pray with you and pray for you as together 
apart, we celebrate the Christ child. So God, thank you that lives are valuable, that you made people and then you arranged for us in the midst of our sin and rebellion. You gave us the greatest gift, the gift of your son. Thank you for Bethlehem. Thank you that we are valuable enough for you to give the most valuable gift ever, the life of Jesus the Christ. So as we celebrate each in our own way, in our own families, as the way we gather, we honor you, we recognize you, and we thank you for the gift of salvation made possible by Jesus the Christ. And we pray this in his awesome and wonderful name. Amen and amen. And so now we've, we've saved the best for last. Our children are singing, so why don't you just relax and join in them as they sing away in a manger. Let's sing together. It was cool, wasn't it? I just enjoy our kids singing together, and we just enjoyed having a different kind of service with fun stuff, different stuff. And now, absolutely last, really finally, you're going to see some of us who went to the Paloma Landing Retirement Center and sang Christmas carols to them. We couldn't get too close because of COVID, but we went, we sang, and they saw. And so as we finish, Merry Christmas, and let's watch this together.